This procedure demonstrates the optic nerve crush injury and subsequent analysis of retinal ganglion cell survival in a mouse model. This is achieved by injection of a fluorescent dye into the superior colliculus on day one. The dye is retrogradely transported to the retinal ganglion cells to label this cell population. As a second step, an optic nerve crush injury is made on day four to cause optic nerve degeneration, which will lead to a gradual death of the retinal ganglion cells. On day 11, the retina is dissected in order to investigate retinal ganglion cell survival. The result of this procedure shows the number of remaining viable retinal ganglion cells based on a count of fluorogold labeled retinal ganglion cells performed using fluorescence microscopy. Hi, I'm Zhong Shu Tang from Dr. Shuri Li's lab in National Eye Institute, NIH. Now, I'm going to show you how to perform the mouse optic nerve crush injury model. The main advantage of this technique is that it provides a simple, stable, and efficient way to label retinal ganglion cells and to investigate the survival or degeneration of the optic nerve crush injury. This method can help answer key questions in the optical neuropathy field such as glaucoma. The implications of this technique extend to water therapy. If we apply some treatment, such as growth factors or some receptor agonists or inhibitors before or at the same time as optic nerve crush. Generally, individuals new to this method will struggle. Bleeding often happens in the beginning, as the orbiter is rich of blood vessels. Thus, Visual demonstration of this method is critical, as the optic nerve crush part is difficult to learn. However, practice would make it easier. After deeply anesthetizing the mouse with an approved anesthetic, shave the hair on the head around the area of the incision site. Carefully place the mouse into the stereotaxic apparatus and ensure that the head is stable. Disinfect the scalp three times each with iodine and a 70% alcohol solution, alternating between each solution. Using a sterile scalpel, make a sagittal incision in the scalp to expose the skull. Clean the skull with 3% hydrogen peroxide. Then identify bregma where the sagittal suture intersects the coronal suture on the skull. Measure 2.9 mm posterior and 0.5 mm lateral to bregma and mark this point. Carefully, drill a small hole at the point of the second mark. During drilling, apply saline to the site where the hole is drilled to prevent secondary heat injury. Once a suitable hole has been drilled, position a Hamilton syringe over the hole. Ensure that the needle has clear passage through the meninges and lower the tip of the syringe to a depth of 1.6 millimeters from the surface of the brain. Then, very slowly, at a flow rate of 0.2 microliters per minute, Inject one microliter of fluorogold neural tracer dye into the superior colliculus. Allow the needle to sit in place for five minutes to prevent the fluorogold from diffusing up along the needle track. Next, carefully withdraw the needle and close the incision site with sutures. Then, release the mouse from the stereotaxic apparatus. Administer a subcutaneous injection of buprenorphine for analgesia. Move the mouse to a warm, dry area. Monitor the animal until it is able to maintain an upright posture, then return it to the home cage. For the first three days after the labeling procedure, systemic analgesics and topical antibiotic ointment are given twice daily and the mouse is closely monitored. Three days after the tracer dye injection, the mouse is deeply anesthetized with an approved anesthetic. Place the mouse under the dissecting microscope and center the mouse to visualize the eye. 
Use a pair of spring scissors to incise the conjunctiva of the left eye at the 4 o'clock position. Next, gently dissect the orbital muscles and move them to one side. Taking care not to damage any blood vessels, expose the white optic nerve at the level of its exit from the eye globe. Then, using cross-action forceps, crush the optic nerve at a distance of 2 mm from the eyeball, applying pressure for 3 seconds. After completion of the crush injury, cover the optic nerve with the displaced tissues and conjunctiva and suture using 10 0 size silk suture material. After suturing and before the mouse recovers from anesthesia, apply some antibiotic ophthalmic ointment to the eyes and administer an injection of buprenorphine for analgesia. Finally, move the mouse to a warm and dry recovery area. Monitor the animal until it has recovered sufficiently from anesthesia to maintain an upright posture. Then, return the animal to the home cage. Ensure that the animal is monitored closely and administer systemic analgesics and topical antibiotics twice daily for the first three days following the optic nerve crush procedure. The retinae are harvested seven days after the optic nerve crush procedure. After euthanizing the mouse by carbon dioxide asphyxiation and cervical dislocation, use a pair of forceps to enucleate the eyes by applying pressure to the orbit. Immerse the eyes in 4% paraformaldehyde for two hours to fix. Then, remove the 4% paraformaldehyde and wash the eyes three times in PBS. After fixation, dissect the retina according to the previously published protocol. Image the surviving viable retinal ganglion cells in defined areas of the retina using a fluorescent microscope. Retinal ganglion cell density in each region can be calculated from these images. This microscope image shows a fixed, flattened and mounted retina. This image shows the fluorogold labelled retinal ganglion cells before optic nerve crush injury in an uninjured, normal retina. The retinal ganglion cells have been retrogradely labelled with green fluorogold neural tracer dye injected into the superior colliculus. This image shows the fluorogold labelled retinal ganglion cells seven days after the optic nerve crush injury. Compared with the previous image of retinal ganglion cells in the uninjured normal retina, the number of viable retinal ganglion cells is significantly lower in the retinae with an optic nerve crush injury. Once mastered, the first part, labeling retinal ganglion cells, can be done in 20 minutes. The second part, optic nerve crush, can be done in 5 minutes. While attempting this procedure, it's essential not to use too much force and not to crush for too long, because they may lead to damage to the ophthalmic artery and therefore subsequent retinal escape. The optical nerve crush injury mirroring model is useful to study the process of retinal ganglion cell death and survival. This model is also often used to investigate the effect of different regions and the genes on retinal ganglion cell apoptosis and survival. One advantage of this model is that it has a high degree of reproducibility. So, good luck to your work!